you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. However, you teach a man to fish, you feed him for life. All right guys, the certificate of analysis. What is it? Why we care about it? How to use it? And much more coming up. Let's jump right in. What's going on guys? This is Dr. Andreoni from Cannabis Doctors of Florida. The highly anticipated and long overdue video about the certificate of analysis is finally here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the basics of the COA. Specifically, what it is, what it tells us, and why we care about it. Watch till the end because I'm 100% certain that I'm going to blow your mind with the super simple Andreoni method to interpret the COA. So, what is the certificate of analysis? Per ACS Labs, the Certificate of Analysis, or the COA, is an analytical report of product content from an independent laboratory that contains safety and potency verification, and it includes all the performed tests on the product sample. In layman's terms, the COA is a certificate created by a licensed lab that performs a variety of tests on the sample that's being sent to them. The samples usually come in from the dispensaries or the MMTCs, and then they provide us the results of this testing via this certificate. Generally, all the COAs will have a total complete summary page, and this is usually the front page. The following pages will give you all the details on the testing performed, the potencies, etc. All the products that you see in the dispensaries currently have already undergone and passed all the testing required, which is why we can purchase them today. What kind of test results are we talking about here? So the labs test for residual solvents, pesticides, microbial contaminants, heavy metals, mycotoxins, things like that. These labs also test for the potency of the products, which we can also see on the COA. The potency results precisely tell the customer which cannabinoids, terpenoids, and flavonoids the product contains and how concentrated they are. This is what we care about and we'll go into more detail shortly. Before we do, there are a couple more basics I'd like to cover. When looking at the COA, and to be honest, even before we look at the testing, you always want to look to make sure that you see the following. The report dates, the lab performing the testing, the brand and the name of the product being tested, and the harvest numbers, the batch numbers, etc. You can usually find this information at the top of the COA on the first page. You always want to look at the date that the COA was completed. If the date that the product was tested was like four months ago or later, meh, I probably would go without that product and I'd probably get something more fresh. If you don't see this info, that's a red flag. And more on that, if the product doesn't even have a COA, that's like a triple red flag. In addition, all COAs should have a proof of compliance product mark somewhere on the COA. This shows us that the labs that are testing all these products are meeting all the necessary standards by law when doing so. Lastly, a real COA can only be issued by an accredited laboratory. The labs that are allowed to participate in MMJ product testing per the OMMUR, AccuScience Labs, ACS Labs, Americana Labs, Green Scientific, Keicha, US Canalytics, and a couple others that we see here. I'll leave a link to where you can find all the accredited laboratories in the description below. All the different labs will have different looking COAs, but the information should remain the same. And really, you'll see different looking COAs depending on where you shop. For instance, if you shop at the Flowery, you'll notice that they mainly use Keicha Labs to test their products, whereas if you shop at Cookies, they mainly use ACS Labs. All right, so so far we've pretty much covered the basics of the COA regarding what it is and what it tells us. Now let's discuss why we care about the COA and how we can use it to our advantage. All right then, so let's get to the good stuff. Drum roll, please. I'm about to show you the Andreoni way of interpreting the COA. This is exciting. Once you've got a chance to look at the whole COA, now I really want you to focus your eyes on one thing, the potency summary. Like I said before, this is the part that we really care about because it shows us the cannabinoid and terpene profiles. On the ACS lab COAs, it'll be at the bottom right. On the Keicha COA, you can find these on the first and second pages. The cannabinoid percentages are found here, but these matter less as we'll see in a second. What we really care about is the terpene summary and the total terpene percentage. All right, well, if you haven't seen my terpene videos yet, go watch them. But terpenes are the compounds in cannabis that provide us all the medical benefits in combination with CBD and THC. And thus, these pieces of information will help us determine what medical benefits this product has to offer. And on a trivial note, we're able to determine whether that product will be an indica or a sativa. I'm going to present this a little backwards and you'll see why soon. Instead of taking a look at the terpene profile or summary, let's first take a look at the total terpene percentage. This number will let us know the potency of the total terpenes for that product. Like I kind of mentioned, terpenes are super potent and you don't really need much of them for their effects to be felt. And thus, when looking at the total terpene percentage, we shouldn't expect to see large numbers. It's common to see total terp percentages in the 1-2% to range. If it's under 2, alright. If it's 2% or more, that's good. If it's 3% or more, that's great. If it's 4% or more, very nice. And if it's 5% or more, which I've only seen at Grow Healthy so far, 
Martha, we gotta write home about it. As a general rule of thumb, once the terpenes are above 2%, you generally don't have to worry about the THC percentage. What's more, if the terpenes are 3% or higher, then the THC percentage really doesn't matter. For example, if I saw a flower with 15 or 16% THC, but then I saw the total terpene profile at like a 3 or 4%, in my head, I already know that that 15 or 16% THC is going to turn into like an 18 or 19%. And more on this, I actually look at the total terpene percentage first, even before the terpene profile. Because let's just say I was buying flour, for example, if the total terpene percentage was less than two, I don't even give it a chance. I just toss it and we're on to the next one. <laughs> well, look at you with the high standards. I'm not saying you should do this, but once you're more experienced, you can do this. And this should reiterate why the total terpene percentage should matter more and the total THC percentage should matter less. All right, so the total terpene percentage will give us an indication of how strong the effects will be felt. But how do we know what these medical benefits or effects will even be? The terpene profile. All the terpenes that were detected in this product will be found here. On the ACS lab COA, the terpenes are listed in successive order based on their relative concentrations, with the top terpenes being more abundant and then the terpenes towards the bottom being less abundant. Next to the individual terpene concentrations, you can also see a nice little infogram depiction of the amounts of each terp relative to one another with the horizontal bar chart that they have next to it. This makes it easy because we can see which terpenes are dominating right from the get-go and then we can kind of predict from there. On the Keicha Lab COA, the terpenes are always listed in the same order. They do have the horizontal bar graph chart thing showing you the concentrations relative to one another so you can still see the amounts. So now that we know which terpenes are in the product, now all we really have to know is what each terpene does and how they'll affect us. Wow. It's starting to come full circle, right? This is the part of my method that does require a little bit of homework, but it's worth it. Having this knowledge will literally take your decision making at the dispensary to a whole other level. For example, if I looked at the COA and the top terpene was beta myrcene, when I think of beta myrcene, I think of an indica because it's going to put you to sleep. Beta myrcene in combination with THC is known for that couch lock sedative effect. Myrcene is also good for pain control as well. On the flip side, if I saw something high in limonene and alpha pinene and or terpinaline, I would expect to feel a more focused stimulatory effect or a sativa. These kinds of things you'll pick up real quick. And here are a couple other ways to apply these principles. Let's say you're pulling up to a new dispensary and you're not familiar with the strains that they have. If by now you already know what you're looking for in terms of the terpene profile, well then fear not. If you've taken notes or if you have a screenshot of a COA from a product that really was effective for you, all you have to do is look at that screenshot and then compare it to the products that are available at the current store. You don't always need to have the same strain in order for this to work. You literally can just compare and contrast the product by looking at the COAs in store to what you know works for you and then you can go accordingly. Also, if you ever had a bad experience or you had unwanted side effects or something along those lines with a product, look at the COA. This usually gives you the information of like why the side effect occurred or what happened. More likely than not, you'll be able to single out the terp that was the culprit and then you know to avoid these kinds of things in the future. Doc, so you're telling me that I can take this information and apply it to any situation? I know, it's pretty legit, huh? And I don't know why I saved this for last. This video is kind of like all over the place, but I'll finish up with this. Where can we find the certificate of analyses? Florida State mandates through the Office of Medical Marijuana Use that all cannabis products are tested and all of the certificate of analysis must be available for patients to view at the dispensary. This is the law. If they don't, that's another story. More recently, dispensaries like True Leave and The Flowery have put their COAs online for customers to view before they even purchase the product or flower so they know what they're getting into. This is actually extremely helpful and I would encourage all the other dispensaries to hop on board. What's more, a couple dispensaries like Vitacan and Grow Healthy, they'll have a QR code on their product, you scan it with your phone, type in the lot or the batch number, and then the COA will appear on your phone. At this point, you're already in store or you already have the product, so this may be a little less helpful, but this is still an option. Guys, I hope I didn't exhaust you too much. I hope this helped, and I'll see you next time.